Okay, so. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay. Hey guys, my name is Tejas. Why? Hey guys, my name is Tejas Nair, and uh, I'm the studio engineer for Eleven Gauge Recordings. Uh, I'm also uh, a freelance FOH engineer, and this is a new series of uh, podcasts that I'm starting with uh, creatives uh, in the city that I presently live in, and also. Uh, from around the world hopefully uh, so this episode we will uh, be speaking to rahul menon uh, other than being uh, one of my uh, childhood friends uh, he presently handles uh, social media and digital marketing for bands festivals all of that stuff and also uh, used to tour manage for bands but presently as we all know there are no there are not many shows happening uh hopefully you can continue uh yes. managing tours for bands very soon so please give a huge round of applause <laughs> for uh, raul menon thank you thank you cool so uh, thanks for doing this uh, first of all uh, we don't usually have uh, video conversations uh, yeah so it's uh, so it's nice to do this once in a while and uh, also like see what's going on with each others uh work yeah. in life and, and it gave stuff. me a reason to wear like a band t-shirt and like yeah. brush my hair a little bit so yeah. that people can Put see the perfume exactly because yeah. you don't want a stinky podcast also you don't have many opportunities to put on perfume these days so exactly yeah it's like so. nothing like even when i just go to the house i'm like eh. everyone's yeah. sweating and stinking anyway so i just i i love the opportunity to wear some perfume i feel like i'm doing something exactly, worthwhile yeah. for the day <laughs> it's same it's, like when you're wearing a suit you just feel really good in a suit doesn't matter what you're doing or if i just but, wear jeans if i wear any <laughs> pants for that matter it is, it is, i'm doing something true. useful for that day. if i missed out uh, something in your intro uh, if you want to add something uh, of the other uh, duties nothing, that you handle yeah nothing like two different from that like my main job is in digital marketing so it involves working with lots of bands many independent bands i also work for a couple of labels on just their digital marketing because i am generally potentially not a big fan of record labels they have, yeah. they have their place and they have all the thing it ultimately comes down to your deal all those things to say i think independent is the way to go but i still want to work with the uh, bands that are uh, that yeah, yeah so i work i also Yeah exactly yeah so I've got I've worked with bands who are not signed I also work with some labels who actually understand the value in like having digital marketing presence hmm. so in in that case if they just say hey we've got $1000 for you to spend on ads for this particular band's campaign and they kind of let me do my own thing they're like yeah this is the schedule these are all the songs that are coming out so and then I talk to the band directly figure out a plan and stuff and aside from that I would So this is actually kind of new newish working with bands because previously mm. when there were lots of tours festivals and stuff that was my main gig so I like in a year I would work on like 20 plus maybe even more tours mm. and it would be like kind of fun just like doing the marketing stuff majority in Australia because I used to live there so I still had the connections and but yeah over the last year and a bit I started doing more work with bands directly and yeah and i also tour manager but mainly for plenty and yeah. so for me an australian progressive metal band yes yeah so i do tour management stuff mostly in europe and asia if that happens and yeah it's been good so tour manager is not really my main gig as such like my at least right i would now. say yeah, at least right now yeah. yeah and then even like you know on like a regular world tour management stuff it's something that i like doing Mm. So it's usually just like my excuse if when he says hey we're touring Europe in like March next year I'll be like sick figure all the dates then I usually plan my holiday so mm. either before the tour or after the tour I plan a little holiday so I can kind of use that excuse to leave the country get visas cuz mm. we have an Indian passport you know how yeah. easy that is to get yeah. visas very easy. so very easy so <laughs> yeah that also comes into play yeah Uh, you mentioned uh, like you have the contacts from australia so if you, maybe you can get into why you have those contacts and uh, what your background yes. is yeah initially 
as per any, I would say, regular Indian family would do. It's yeah. like I was pushed to study a particular course, which was commerce. And like, you know, and I think like back then when I didn't know, I think like one of the biggest things is just not knowing enough. And when I didn't know, I was like, yeah, commerce makes more sense. I'm going to be an accountant. And my dad was stoked. Yeah. He was like, good, good, good. That's good. And yeah. And eventually, like towards the end of school was when, like, you know, we were in like bands and like playing stuff. And I'm like, hey, I actually really like doing stuff. But, you know, I wanted to study music. But my parents were like, nah, maybe you should do commerce first. Do your music stuff after. And I'm like, sick. No problem. You wanted to study and, uh, like music in general or drums because you were a drummer yeah because I, because i was playing drums i wanted to get more into drums and yeah. i think it's like it was all even i was probably confused at that point like not really mm. knowing what i want to do but commerce was like the safe option because i'm like that's what kind of everyone does so i'm like i think i should also go in that direction and i was okay in like business finance and all that in studies so i was like yeah this makes sense so i studied in coimbatore for three years mm. And from there, finished my BCom, and then I started. I was playing in bands when I was there as well, hmm. and that's when I realized, like you know, hey, there's actually more to this music business thing. I should try and work it out. And after uni, I had a conversation with my parents, and they were like, "Yep, cool. If you want to do music now, we can support you in that." And yeah, I applied for like a music performance degree in Australia to the Australian Institute of Music, and hmm. that. So basically, I sent them an audition of me playing drums to like Gojira, Behemoth, Decapitated, and stuff like that. After which, they kind of just replied in a nice way, saying, "Yeah, this won't really work." Yeah. But I also sent them a statement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because like when they think performance, they think like you know, like those jazz drummers kind of thing mm. who really know their instruments. Whereas I was just like. blast beats now i also gave them a statement of purpose and they read that and they're like we actually think you might be suited to a business degree so why don't you have a conversation with them then i was like you know what they're not wrong because i do have a bcom degree mm. so i get the business side of it and back then again it's basically my own ignorance where i was like cool so i'm going to work for a record label and that's where my life is going to go and stuff like that had my interview and got into the university great in 2013 moved to australia started living my life and uh yeah then i kind of learned about record labels and stuff and i'm like well this kind of sucks hmm. and uh that was when like a turning point and then i had like a tour management class as well and that's what i fell in love with i was like this is great like lots hmm. of organizing and you get to tr- do lots of shit and i'm like this is good i want to do this and i got into tour management side and i really like you know kind of ace that ace that class as well mm. and uh yeah i started working for a touring company and then the guy there was like hey we need help with marketing obviously so do you want to learn how to do facebook ads i'm like sure and then he showed me what he knew mm. and then he was like you just learn the rest by yourself he goes like we've got the money to spend so we can afford to take risks so he goes mm-hmm. like just kind of learn on your own and yeah that's when i got into facebook marketing like 2014 2015 hmm. and i slowly started doing like little by little and then it became like more intense and yeah i think about a year after that i was just handling the entire digital marketing for that company it was great like you know that really helped me kind of get my foot in and also i, I would say we, i got in relatively early like when facebook ads were like becoming kind of like a mainstay yeah. thing and yeah that's when i really got to take advantage of that and yeah from there because i was working at a touring company i got contacts with other promoters venues ticketing companies and i just had like a really good network of people who i knew and eventually when i had to leave australia because all the visa regulations and changes and stuff that happened so it got to a point where i couldn't really continue there unless i had to like my application was rejected because the company wasn't allowed to sponsor me mm. so it wasn't my fault it was more of the company's fault but even that doesn't make sense because the company is just like there's the main guy there's a general manager and then there's me so it's like 
there shouldn't be an issue. Company makes a lot of money because I know the company makes a lot of money, so it's not a money thing. But yeah, it's just the government regulations and all that stuff behind it. So I could have stayed there if I appealed the decision, but then it, was, it became like too much of like, you know, I'm stuck where I don't know if I'm going to live in Australia or if one day I have to pack up and go. And then I just decided, yeah, this is enough, pack up and go. So that's how all my contacts and my a brief history into my life, I guess. So yeah, cool. that's how it all started. And then came to India. Yeah, but then it was kind of okay in a way because I was touring. So Pliny was like, come to a manage for me in Europe. So that got me out to Europe a couple of times. Then I went on a holiday and during this whole process, I kind of started my own thing, just like I am a freelance digital marketing person. And I hit up my Australian contacts and because I had a good reputation there, they're like, yep, yeah, sure, we'll give you some work. And obviously time difference, time zones, all those things had a few issues, but most people were more than happy to kind of look past oh, it because yeah. they were getting results. So mm-hmm. that really helped. Like we mentioned before, you handle majorly uh, digital marketing for uh, artists and stuff. So yeah. how, how important would you say uh, that is for, uh, for musicians in general? And uh, what do you think are like uh, the problems that you uh, face uh, with an artist uh, actually saying that, okay, do I need this? Do I not need that extra bit of marketing, yeah. uh, which, which comes from a like a professional like you? So as far as digital marketing goes, I would say that's probably one of the most important things you can do. And that is taking into consideration that like, you know, you have your music ready, you have actually like good music ready that you're really happy and proud of. Mm. So it's like you need your product. So without a product, there's no marketing. So if you're really happy with your product and then it's kind of like, you know, and if you're also trying to promote yourself as a band or a brand and stuff like that, you need to be marketing and you can put up a post on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and all that. And it will give you some organic push, but then you obviously... Like, you know, you, it needs to be viral content. And if you're like, you know, I listen to mainly death metal, progressive metal kind of bands, mm. that is super niche. So if you have a really good death metal song mm. and you put it on your Facebook, you probably a hundred people will see it. 20 people will care. Five people will care enough to say something about it. And if you're really lucky, one person will buy the song. Mm. So like, you know, that's the hard part. If that's like the hard reality i would say yeah. so that's where marketing comes in which allows you to basically target your music to like-minded people and so that's basically the tool that you have this is marketing and then again it kind of comes back on to you for having the right assets like you need to have like good looking videos it needs to look great it needs to sound great so you need to put in the effort and i think one of the hardest things which people don't really realize it's like, if you want to run a successful campaign, I would say like, just like uh, from my experience of the different albums and stuff I've worked in where I'm like, I worked with really big budgets. I've also worked with small budgets, but I feel like if you have an EP or maybe even an album to an extent, like you need to spend at least $500 on marketing Hmm. for that particular release. And that it's like, when you compare to, people living overseas, like if you're in Australia, Europe, US and stuff, $500 is kind of not that high because Mm. they earn proportionately to that. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. But then when it comes to India, what I've realized is the income, what we earn in India and what people earn abroad is very different. And when it comes to the spending the money as well, it's like we are hesitant. So I think like 500 US would be like 35, 35, to mm. 40,000 rupees, yeah. which is, it, it is quite a bit of money, especially in India, that is a fair bit of money. So telling a band, hey, you need to invest this kind of money, it's like, it, it almost immediately makes them feel like, whoa, that is a lot of money. But then... And unfortunately, what, I, even social media doesn't work proportionately <laughs> yeah, depending exactly. on your yeah, income. But, so uh, yeah. you still have to, you still have to put in if you're if you're an international band or if you're a band yeah. from india or wherever like the amount of money that you have to put in there's a minimum yeah. amount of money that would give you that result 
results exactly so like you yeah. said like uh, you would suggest like a 500 dollar budget yeah. for spending on these platforms so like you know you have this kind of money and if they want me to run their campaigns i have my fee on top of that hmm. so it's like that yeah. instantly scare like any band from india that i would work with i tell them this upfront where i'm like you know hey you need to spend this much money you can make it work for less Hmm. but then it's like it needs to be done in a way that it justifies what you're paying me as well hmm. so it's like if you were going to spend 200 dollars in ads and i say oh well i calculate my time and the effort is going to take and i'm like oh my fee is going to be 3 400 dollars for example hmm. Hmm. then i'm like so you're paying me more money than you're spending hmm. which kind of doesn't make sense so i'm like i think the mentality that needs to change is that it is an investment it's an investment yeah. that's going to get you returns in like kind of super long term as well it's mm. not like you put some stuff up today spend money and in like at the end of the campaign you've made all your money back that mm. rarely happens it's like mm. you know that that would be like your song explodes and stuff like that and also it's like you know how you, the different avenues of to monetize it's like mod stores mm. and you know selling pre-orders and stuff like that engaging your existing community that's what people need to everything is from need to be spending money it's about like this and marketing can also be without you spending money it's just like organically building a community where people are people kind of feel invested in mm. your musical adventure so to speak mm. and so that is something which bands need to focus on where it's like sure you can spend money and get results but you should also be looking at maximizing every single way you can make money by not really spending too much money or spending mm. no money at all that those opportunities do exist but it requires a lot of effort and yeah. yeah and the other thing which i also feel like is worth mentioning is it also depends on your target demographic so if you're like a uh, say an indian classical band and your target audience is basically india and mainly in india maybe indians living abroad for example mm. so the way facebook ad system works is every it's not like one price globally yeah. it's like there's there's an auction and it's like you know the bidding and the population size of the country so india is basically one of the cheapest countries to advertise it hmm. so if you spend this as an example if you spend 100 dollars you can probably reach 10000 people in the us hmm. but if you spend 100 dollars in india you probably reach yeah maybe even oh, more maybe even like more. you know Now, i would even say like 50 to 60k plus you can reach okay. within india hmm. but the thing is the same kind of logic applies where it's like you're targeting to an indian demographic so you need to see how or how will you also going to monetize this like hmm. you know people because if you say take people to spotify for streaming then it's like the spotify the amount of money you pay for spotify in india for a year is like about a little more than a month or so overseas so yeah. it's like here i think we pay like 2000 yeah. something for a year whereas 99 no sorry 140 a month so yeah uh, yeah. yeah 140 a month so. yeah, about that much yeah and whereas in australia and stuff it's about like, i think 1199 per month so yeah, that's basically so and because of that your payout also changes so mm. if something pays you like just example like if you get like 0.004 yeah. per stream in the US in India that would be like 0.0004 hmm. so it's like you might lose a lot of money by just advertising to just India because the payout is that low hmm. and i think like in India i could be wrong but i feel like in India they haven't fully embraced the power of streaming yet hmm. like i still feel like people still go to download illegally perhaps or they this it's like they haven't embraced the full streaming life so like fortunately a lot of people that i know do use spotify apple music and stuff like that but i think there's still a pretty uh, large i think in india market. a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of people i know uh, still don't uh, it's just 140 a month but Yeah. people are still not uh, subscribed so they would rather yeah. go through that 30 second ad in between uh, it, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and it's like yeah and because i think they it's like it's you can understand because they're like oh i can't get it for free so why yeah. would i pay for it and but the way i look at it is like 
I've got like, you know, my Netflix subscription, Amazon yeah. Prime subscription, all the kinds of stuff. And for me, it's like, you know, maybe I don't even watch Hotstar that much. Yeah. But if I feel like if someone tells me, oh, hey, there is this really good show that you need to watch. And if I see it's there on Hotstar, for me, it's like more than worth my time to pay for a subscription for a year rather than going to like an illegal website. Yeah. And then like, you know, and what do you call it? It's like sit through a bunch of pop-ups yeah. and all that kind of shit. And you don't even need file. to subscribe for the year. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you have the flexibility of... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like I binge, I binge watch shows like yeah. anything. So it's like, you know, if, if I could just do a monthly kind of thing Correct. and like finish like five, six, five or six yeah. shows and that's and like another stop. option. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. You, you can do stuff like that. But yeah, I think it's just the mentality of like, if it, it's there for free, but then people kind of, maybe they're happy to put in the effort or yeah. maybe financially they're really at like a place where they can't afford it. But then I, I would feel like at, after a certain point, you would pay for comforts rather yeah. than like sitting through 10 different pop-ups and a potential virus to download. I've had people from Australia ask me like, you know, hey, how is it to tour in India? Mm-hmm. And I just tell them honestly, it's like, it is difficult because of the money issue and people's attendance is kind of lacking. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you, while there's a lot of potential, hmm. there is, it's still going to be slightly hard. And that's why, like, you know, I have respect for tour promoters here because I'm like, they take a risk every time they put on a show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, I feel like at the very least, as people who listen to the same similar music, it's like, just support the scene. It's like even less about supporting the band or supporting the promoters. Like you support the scene because more money you inject into like the live music space, the bigger it's going to get because like, you know, there's lots of expenses to pay for. And as someone who's worked as a tour manager, even from the artist perspective, I know how much money it costs to like go on tour and promote the tour. And it's like, and if you complain, like, you know, I can't pay 500 rupees for a ticket, whereas for a band who probably paid 50,000 rupees for Like, you know, all the gear, the transport, the flights, and, like, you know, all the kinds of stuff. So, I'm like, you know, then... They would... You know, like, uh, there are... I mean, there are uh, some of those people. They would rather spend uh, 15,000, 20,000 uh, rupees to watch Dream Theater uh, on, front, <laughs> on the front uh, row or whatever. I think the front yeah. row was even more, I think. Not just 15. Probably, I think yeah. 20,000 <laughs> was the middle row or whatever. But... Yeah. Uh, they're not willing to spend like 300 bucks. Yeah. I think that's a mentality thing where it's like it is, yeah. people kind of automatically, it's like they look for other forms of entertainment. They were like, you know, and I would say a little of it also comes back onto the band in terms of how much they promote themselves mm-hmm. and what kind of show they put on. Because like, you know, you're as a band, you're battling against a lot of things that go against you and there's even more in terms of the end, your entertainment at the end of the day hmm. there's a bit of a duty and responsibility for the bands as well that's where the, that's when yeah. we can start another discussion on i mean uh, we won't go, get into that like the whole other discussion of the band's uh responsibility of giving a good uh giving yeah. a good show which hiring the right people uh not yep. uh cutting costs and um, exactly yeah know, uh, all of that, hiring the right engineer, hiring the right uh, yeah. light. If it's Lots a big enough so. show, lighting engineer, all of that. Yeah. Um, I think that even, it doesn't even have to be a show. It came in before that. It's like your mixing, mastering, yeah. and like, you know, where, where you record your songs, like all those things kind of make a difference. Hmm. And it's like, sometimes it's just, you need the right team. That's like the ultimate thing. And you need a right team. You need like a right plan. You need like a good vision for your band. Mm-hmm. And it should not be that like, you know, you just, you make, you make like a really good song and then you find kind of, okay, cool. And now I need to get this song mixed and mastered, blah, 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 blah. Where do I go? And you need to like get like good sound engineers to do it. And good sound engineers doesn't necessarily mean that like, you know, you go straight to the top mm-hmm. because one, too expensive. Like, you know, and they probably will even just say no because they can't do it or because they're too busy. And it's like quite often there, are, there would be people like, you know, where you live. And especially when you're from India, 
it's like you know there's there's no shortage of talent as such for musicians mm-hmm. and there are also like plenty of sound engineers and stuff like even like yourself like you do quality work which can stand against like you know a lot of other high profile names and that's not it's like what do you call that you did that from your little studio in bangalore this sitting by yourself listening to stuff and you learn all that stuff by yourself and it's like the money you charge within india hmm. would be like you know quarter maybe or yeah. quarter of like, you know, yeah exactly even less than what someone at your exact same level would charge in like the us uk and stuff like that and then or there are also people who go like you know oh we are getting our album mixed and mastered by the guy who mixes meshuga and opeth or carnival yeah. and stuff like that but then it's like that's just great like you know good good that you managed to get that but how much money are you spending and how and much how much yeah. uh, how right is he for your uh, your music yeah exactly yeah so and that's the other aspect just choose and, him for the name uh, exactly and, yeah and yeah for sure so what happens is like you get the name and your chance to really show off that name is in like your announcement post like hey this is the first single from my cool band mix and mastered by Jens Bogren like you know mm. obviously he is great mm. but then aside from that one post and how good it's going to sound mm. what other benefits are you having from it like you know yeah i show sure you paid him like i don't know how much he charges but i would i would assume like quite a bit Yeah I would even just say say it's $1000 a track which I'm pretty sure maybe that. not yeah it's, it's definitely that. more than so it's like $1000 a track so it's like how much like 60 70000 rupees 10, yeah for a track and you mix your entire album there and you're like cool so you got your seven song album mixed there cool you spent like 4 5 lakhs on it how much money do you have for this marketing that we don't have the budget and I'm yeah. like well well if you don't have the budget for that then who is going to listen to your song from your 1000 facebook followers who out of which 500 might see the post 100 yeah. might care i'm like so why don't you instead find someone really good within india who can get you the sound that you want yeah and like not you cannot just i mean from uh, uh, any from wherever you are uh, instead of yeah exactly yeah. to so someone example, yeah. not uh, just india yeah i'm yeah. just was anyway you are like any, it doesn't have yeah, to just, come down to the to uh, his or her name or who yeah. you are hiring or um yeah, clear, uh, yeah. if and he's right for the project if it if he's right for the project if you like his previous work if you if that person's uh, charges fit your uh, budget all of these things have to be taken into consideration and not Definitely. just not just uh he is this guy and it would be cool to have his name that's yeah exactly that's yeah. not it's, the right it's approach. like you know yeah you and you when you, even when you plan all this thing you need to have like a fully blown out like you know fully planned out mm. thought process it's like cool i'm going to spend a ridiculous amount on the mixing mastering of the song and then i also need to market the song so i need money for that and if you're not if you don't have the money to kind of like you know put some money into the marketing as well like how else are you going to get your music heard and like you know so i would definitely say like you know start local like if i'm if i'm working on music i'll be like cool i am in india i make this much money i know what i make and i need to find with people who are at my level where i can afford to pay them some money and obviously yeah, if if the music is particularly complicated and layers and all the kinds of stuff you can spend a bit more than what you can potentially afford even then i'm like tread tread lightly like you know yeah. don't spend more than you can afford and find people locally because ultimately like beyond a certain point don't spend uh, more than uh, you can afford uh, but also uh, don't uh, haggle for uh, oh yeah definitely 100 yeah, or 1000 yeah, yeah. rupees yes i'm talking to you yeah exactly <laughs> yeah definitely that's a thing it's like you know especially if you spend that much money because like ultimately your music does the talking and if you're going to spend a lot of money to get like a sick mix and master and you don't have the money to spend it on marketing yeah then it's like your music is not doing anything and it's like and you are not like you know getting your music mixed by the guy who makes me sugar is not going to make you me sugar or it's not going to give you me sugar level fame maybe 100 people 
extra might notice in music hmm. because that uh, company shared the music on their page and they're like, oh yeah, that's cool. Because I've done that myself when I see hmm. producers or uh, mix engineers and stuff share stuff that I know. I usually just go and listen to it because I'm like, you know, maybe it's cool band. And it becomes like a level of trust as well where I'm like, you know, yeah, I know this guy works with good bands. So hmm. I would go and check it out. And yeah, it's just... It, it depends on... Yeah, uh, you have... I think when you have a band, uh, you need to set your uh, priorities and goals. Uh, yeah. So if you have a band, uh, you you would have a certain goal with that band. Uh, if you want to yeah. listen to uh, your music by yourself, cool. That uh, for yeah. some people that might be uh, that's yeah. cool, that's cool. If that's your objective, that if you're forming a band and you want the music to be listened to uh, the maximum number of people possible, uh, there's there's a limit to what you can do by yourself um, yeah. and uh, like when it comes to uh, audio and uh, you're a musician you're a, you're a great guitar player but you might not know how to do the rest of the stuff uh, recording mixing so that's why you hire an engineer so in the same way uh, you don't know how to market uh, and posting yeah. on Facebook is not marketing so yeah, yeah. you uh, you need to learn all of those things and there are experts who do it so just hire the experts man and like okay, uh, yeah you've, you've, so it's, it's all the- about like spending your your time and your money in like a really smart way rather than it's like you know it's not it's not about working hard it's about working smart mm-hmm. so it's like if you just if all you do is like you work really hard but if you're working really hard on something that you're not good at the like you know it's like what's that saying you're as good as your weakest Link is straight link. or link or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just like that doesn't the, really The work. basic thing so. is you, uh, I think very few people, uh, especially uh, that I've come across, think of uh, their album or their band as a business. And I think yeah. you should think of your band as, uh, a, business. as a business. Yeah. So yeah, you could do it where, for where like, spending, how much you're spending, uh, who yeah. you're spending on, uh, on yeah. uh, all of that, like, take all of these into consideration plan it out beforehand so you yeah. have you have this much budget how do i how do i bifurcate that budget into different exactly. um, you know yeah. stages and uh, yeah, all stages those things your... definitely matter yeah and it's yeah. like you know it's yeah like i said earlier it's about you spend your money in the smartest way possible and that doesn't mean like you go hiring the best at everything yeah. it's more like you hire people who are kind of who you can afford to pay and you know the results, like do your research. Like I could instantly, like, you know, I release my song, which I recorded in my bedroom and hit up some big person to mix it and master it. They they might see it as like, oh, okay, this guy's willing to pay big money for his stupid two minute song. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, man, I might as well just do it, quickly yeah. do it. And then offer you know all the support where he's like, you know, I just want, I just needed that $2,000 to pay for my Ferrari. For example, whereas and, someone locally uh, who yeah uh, whom you might know through a friend or someone like that who you know exactly uh, yeah an acquaintance uh, you might and you might have come across his or her work you yeah. know that uh, that person does a good job uh, so just go you you'll yeah. have like a, a personal you'll have uh, he'll he'll actually take more time uh, to actually yeah. make sure that yeah. Uh, they would care because they know how hard care. it is in the industry and because they're actually in it and they live it. So like, you know, they know what it takes to like, you know, be really good. Yeah. And yeah. And even then it's like, you know, like I always say, if you sit and haggle with like sound engineers and stuff without doing your research, like if you go like, ah, oh, you, you charge this much money, it's too expensive it's out of a budget. It's almost as simple as, okay, fine. Go do your research. Find me someone who is as good or can at least match the level of my work who does it for cheaper and then, yeah. yeah and then then maybe we can have a discussion on if you need me to reduce my fee by thousand rupees or yeah if that is <laughs> the difference pay for my auto <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm coming to a exactly. studio uh, to record i need to save 500 rupees okay <laughs> so it's stuff like that it's, it's like it's you just have to be smart with your money choices and understand that like you know your final product matters. And what you said earlier, like ultimately a band is also a business. Like you could say, I do it for the art. I'm an artist, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, if you say, 
why am I not making any money? Why is no one listening to my music? It's more like what have you done for it? Hmm. Like, you know, it like if, if you rely on this music adventure as also a form of income, like what are you doing for it? An objective of any do- business is profit. Uh, if, yeah. But if you don't think of uh, your band as a business, then you yeah. don't expect a profit. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. As simple as that. You can do it for fun. And it's like, I also get annoyed when people kind of complain about like, oh, it is so hard for musicians these days. Like, I agree. Like, a lot of the time, I sympathize with people who have issues where it's like, you know, they release a sick album, but only a thousand people heard it. And like, you know, the question they ask is like, why should I have to pay Hmm. Facebook for like, you know, reaching my own fans? It's like, how much are you paying to be on Facebook? Zero. Like, Facebook is a free platform. They are a business. They make profit. They need to make profit. Yeah. And like, you know, so it's like, if that's, there's a saying in that movie, like uh, if you aren't paying for a product, you are the product or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Basically, that's basically the whole system of Facebook. It's like they study human behaviors and they kind of want to make you spend money, interact, blah, 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 blah. Lots of these changes are happening in this privacy rated stuff. But then, yeah, ultimately it's more just like, Yes, yeah, like it's it's a business after all, business. and you are yeah, and there's simply no way that it can work if yep. money is not involved. And it's like, and there's the whole concept about fans who want to support. It's like you don't need to have a million fans. You probably only need like a hundred fans who are yep. like really good at loyal fans. what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And then really loyal fans, and then they'll kind of take it up with like this Patreon and like, you know, you can even do like Kickstarter, GoFundMe's and stuff. If people genuinely care about your music, they would be there to support you. And it's like, there's nothing wrong in doing any of these Patreon kind of things because you're giving something in return. You're not just saying, give me money. Hmm. And that's it. It's more like, Hey, if you pay, do these things. It's like, yeah. it's definitely, there, there is an exchange of goods. I don't know why it got so much hate when Patreon and stuff it eventually started. Hmm. But yeah, it was just kind of, it's, it's changing. So I feel like, you know, you just need to develop your fans. That's like yeah. a key aspect. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so like uh, what, I think we kind of uh, spoke about this during this, uh, the last um during the last few uh, minutes, but uh, what was your, your work with clients from uh, overseas abroad and also uh, from India. So what, what do you think is the difference in mindset? Yeah. The ma- I mean, major difference. I mean, we, we know uh, we, I think we spoke about what are the, this one, but what do you feel? Uh, <laughs> what do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. But what yeah, do you feel I think it's like, difference? yeah, I think one of the major things which I've kind of noticed is like, I think in India, there's a lot of reliance on like, I don't know if I don't want to sound like I'm shitting on people in India or anything. I feel like there's a level of like, what do you call it? This is good enough Yeah. versus this is the best it can be. Yeah. It's like, you know, like, you know, if I want to do something, I just, it's like, I just want to get it done hmm. as opposed to like, you know, doing it in like a really good way. So I think people kind of cut corners. Hmm. They look for the easy way out. Or, and I think people complain a lot. Hmm. That's also something which I've definitely noticed. And that's their kind of globally. So there's nothing to really point out or be specific. But yeah, I think it's like... The I mean, if you're, complaining, if, you, if, if you're complaining, then uh, just make sure you're, you're doing uh, your best and then complaining. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you need to do your, like, you know, your due diligence and stuff to see like, if you actually even have a point of it. And like, you know, I haven't worked with too many bands in India. Like I've spoken to a few about work, but then I think it's like, as soon as I mention like what is involved in terms of money, they kind of back off or either financially, they really can't afford it or they just don't think that it's worth it. But then I'm like, it's great that you work with, uh, you majorly work with, uh, you know, clients from abroad because if, abroad, yeah. because if you were, if your clients were from India, then that, that is, yeah. 
all you will experience what you just mentioned <laughs> so yeah so yeah. i think yeah, that definitely plays a part it's like there are obviously like you know there are people who do it right like you know who spend the right amount of money work with the right kind of people and try to maximize their and there are like, people you know, who are willing to uh, learn and take yeah uh, suggestions yeah uh, it's like a yeah, learn, learn and self like for marketing for example it's like i would say it's not that hard to like run a facebook ad it's mm-hmm. like especially if you're not spending that much money if like if you come to me and be like hey i have 200 dollars worth of uh 200 dollars of money which i want to spend on ads i'm like i my fee would be more than that yeah it's like you know so if you so you're not it's not 200 dollars it's like you know at least 500 which you have to spend i'm like it's not worth it like you know if you come to me and say 200 dollars i'm like why don't you learn to do it yourself hmm. like you know and it's to be honest it's not that hard especially when you're dealing with small budgets it's like your your what do you call it your options are very limited like if you put 200 dollars on an ad and be like cool i'm going to target worldwide fans for 200 dollars eventually what you're going to get is you'll get clicks from bots in india and indonesia yeah. and thailand because yeah. that's where the cheap traffic is so yeah. facebook goes like the way facebook works is they try to give you the best return for your money hmm. so if you say i want to spend 200 dollars worldwide so facebook going to be like cool 200 dollars worldwide the best way i can we can give them a return is by showing to the most people which means india hmm. indonesia where it's like the cost of advertising is very low hmm. but you know if you're a band who plays like i don't know can't even give an example like like if you're a death metal band for mm. example and you show your ads to india and stuff like that you might get some interaction like mm. you know there might be a few few clicks few plays and stuff like that but then you actually might get more money mm. by advertising in your local city mm. so if you're a band say from austria for example you live in vienna and you're like a progressive metal band you could target your ads to india and make people so in india see it yeah so if you could so like you know if you do it to india maybe 10000 people would see the ad you might get like couple maybe 100 clicks hmm. and stuff like that and purchases if you're lucky maybe someone buys a t-shirt but if you advertise to vienna where you live in your little community or just austria as a whole hmm. that's the more relevant audience because they they see the ad maybe they want to even interact but they see your name and then you run ads a few times they'll remember your name and then one day you're going to announce a tour hmm. and people in austria are going to know this name because of the ads they have seen and they're like cool this makes like you know maybe i should check this guy out now and, and this comes back I, to what you told before where uh, uh spending is it's like an investment so that's where it yeah. comes back yeah that's, that's, that's where you get your return all, like, yeah exactly so you you would make your money back through like you know t-shirts and playing shows yeah. and it's like you know like if you have money i would say like you know invest your money to do for us canada germany netherlands because those are the kind of places where you can actually go tour and people value music a lot right it's mm. like you know it's it's not just like a side thing it's like mm. they love live shows they love attending events and they want to kind of be involved mm. so those countries help but if you use your money to target like the asian southeast asian countries or even the middle east to an extent it's like it's not i'm not saying people don't value music there but then your chances of being able to make money from these markets at the moment it's kind of low hmm. unless you have what do you call it like an insanely big fan base and like you know there's like i i think there's a lot of money in india for like the uh corporate shows and like college festivals and events but again yeah. that comes down to your music if you're like a death metal band it's like if you look like at any you know, uh, cor- corporate band or like yeah. a, a band that plays a uh, plays uh, uh, corporate shows any yeah. band uh, if you see most uh, bands that play corporate shows are uh, consist of musicians that uh, are really good uh, yeah. and it's not just like uh, m- uh, you know these mediocre uh, musicians because most of it i'm saying there are some that have uh, less than ideal musicians on uh, <laughs> yeah. one, but then uh, if you see most bands that play corporate shows uh, it consists of these kind of people they they might have bands of their own but the, yeah. this is a good way of uh, making back that money corporate shows because corporate uh, you know shows is where 
and the money is unfortunately or fortunately uh, yeah a lot of like the world kind of runs on money blah blah it sounds like a very businessy thing to say yeah but like you know you can make money you can get returns but you need to put in the effort and have be patient that's yeah uh, and and uh, what what would you think is like the main reason why people uh, over here i think that's where you would really notice it over here in this country are skeptic uh, skeptical about this whole marketing yeah i i think it's like i think it boils down to money a lot where it's like yeah. you know where they are unsure about the money and it's like i would also say like we aren't really what like you we, know our brain i don't think we yeah. wired i think uh, most people uh, yeah. we are wired to think short term like I'm short gonna, term yeah, yeah exactly yeah and it's like if i put money in i need to be able to get money out yeah it's like you know that kind of thing whereas it's like that's not how it is like you could you can see your favorite band like yeah. you know touring in like a big ass tour bus and like you know signing autographs and like you know hundreds of cameras in their face but then they've gone through their shitty struggles to get to that point and they've lost a lot of money like i know of tours where like you know even for like plenty tours for example it's like we we do things in a pretty comfortable way but there are so many expenses involved like i told my mom like you know hey we spent this much money like not we spent plenty spent mm-hmm. this much money on this tour and my mom was just like like you know how brain yeah. exploded when i told her the expenses involved yeah. and then she was like why is it that expensive and i'm like well you're paying for a bus that eight people can sleep in mm-hmm. you're paying for a driver who drives the entire night yeah you have to pay for fuel you have to pay for the flight ticket for the six or seven people who have to fly into the country mm. and i'm like it should not surprise you that like there is more than like 15 60000 of expenses for a tour mm. and it's like and yeah people just assume that it's easy to kind of tour i'm like no nah, there's a lot of difficulty and plenty has got to that level after mm. years of struggle it's like like you know previously we would have had to tour like in a small van and kinds of stuff and like i still know a lot of bands who do that where like they really go through the struggle street to like and, and it's never it's something. never an overnight thing i mean uh, oh, yeah, you know you know of yeah. plenty we know of plenty uh yeah. now, for the past few years he's been relevant yeah. but you don't know what he has done before that no, exactly. and how much yeah, how much time and effort he has put in to reach this put in. so definitely yeah uh, and it's like obviously like he is a pretty like you know i would say a rare example of people who kind of made it big mm. like you know in a made it big quickly so i would say quickly like he and especially kind of, for the genre he plays uh, yeah exactly that, yeah he, that he, surprised he me that, a lot like uh, yeah definitely when i yeah, saw his fan like, fan base and the fan loyalty yeah. that he has i was like man like it's it's, that's very really like, you know, yeah his fan loyalty level is like insane so yeah. like he's one of the i would say exceptions to like the general thing where it's mm. like this except when i know big bands who like really struggle and like you know they sleep in like upright vans and then mm. like you know they take turns they probably like you know different people drive every night so that you know one person can sleep and then stuff for like that so it's like lots of lots and lots of sacrifices happen and you have to be ready and then coming back to like you know this touching on your point like what is the change it's like it's they still lose money like you know they struggle mm. and they suffer through shit and they still lose money on their tour and they are ready to come back and do it they ready to come back yeah, exactly yeah and yeah, they exactly. don't they because want they want to continue it's not just like a one time thing where oh i i lost yeah, money exactly. okay i'm going to quit yeah so, no it's just like you know you lose money but it's all investment like you like if your music is good and you enjoy what you're doing it's like you know money shouldn't really be like the main thing deterring you you should be focusing on like how can i offset these costs like you know have a side hustle or like you know be really smart with your business decision spend no, it's, money it's the on- same uh, i i think i can equate why people don't spend on marketing because uh, it's it's equivalent to why uh, people in india have very less uh, uh, knowledge of uh, investments yeah, yeah like, definitely uh, same uh, the uh, yeah i mean uh, i i started getting into all that very recently uh, same, yeah. but a lot of people abroad they learn that like a little yeah. uh, earlier and we learn it very late because like you said we are always taught to save save 
but yeah, then there's no point in saving you it's not yeah, your ultimate goal in life is uh uh has to be to make your money work for you so yeah exactly uh, yeah so let your money work for you. so the earlier you start investing the more exactly. you'll have later on so the, yeah. so i think you can think of uh marketing uh, in general for for these kind of things in that way so yeah. the the more you uh, believe in that the more you invest in that the better returns you yeah. get uh Definitely. you might not see it immediately like if you if you put money yeah. in a whatever mutual fund or uh, whatever yeah. you're not going to see uh, results immediately price yeah uh you know you see it over a period of time compound interest uh, all those uh, all those all things the kind of stuff, yeah so this thing it's, it's like that. it's all about investments and it's like yeah. for music in particular it is a really long term investment like unless like you know you have your like in you know, a popular music genre and stuff like that and you you have to really know the business like you know you can't just expect to write a hit song hmm. and expect that it's just magically going to become like a huge thing it's like you you need to put in the effort you need a collaboration you need to know about your royalties hmm. and like like you need to understand the business of getting into it that's how you know how to like you know plan your money like i can give you $10,000 hmm. and be like cool so i go like hey here's $10,000 for you to release this song hmm. do what you want with it and you would spend your $10,000 in the best way hmm. only if you know the different components involved hmm. of it like you, know, you need certain money for the recording mixing mastering you need certain money for the marketing you might need a publicist like you know there's like all different aspects of the whole music marketing world that you need to know whereas if you if you don't really think about marketing publicists and stuff like that you would just spend your money and be like cool i'm going to save the rest if you have any savings left or you would just try and spend all your money which is also kind of stupid because hmm. you you still need to save money yeah. and yeah it's like there's so many different components that you need to know and then like you said like in terms of making your money work for you and stuff you need to know about your royalties like you know yeah. where your royalties are coming from have you registered with like your local countries like you know performance rights organization is all like big words but it's kind of simple and in most cases the people who work at these companies are more than happy to help you like i learned about all these things over the last few years where i'm like like royalties are really complicated to understand hmm. but there's so much information available yeah. that like you know you sh- it that's no excuse like you know i can't say oh i don't know about royalties and i'm like well uh, we're not living mind. in like the 18th century i mean if you don't know something yeah. uh learn about so, it ask people yeah exactly yeah don't even ask people google it yeah, google it google it if you yeah. really want like uh, an insight and it's not like you have to know like the the yeah the, exactly yeah all of that you just need to just, know like the very basics yeah very if you know that you can handle it and uh, and if you yeah, know yeah like just you have to take some effort you can't just sit there and say you know uh, uh, let's see where it what happens uh, <laughs> definitely yeah, yeah. and so, yes yeah, uh, so i was understanding the business and like yeah. being really smart with them and especially from india or not just india it's like especially in a situation where you aren't making too much money and like you, you need you need your living paycheck to paycheck and stuff like mm-hmm. that you just have to be smart with your money and it's like you know and just general outlook like you know like i said side hustles figure out ways to monetize and like you know feel free to break from your system of like or the whole uh, tradition and heritage and like you know the stuff to your family's force and it's like uh, what do you call it tradition is peer pressure from dead people mm. yeah, like you know it's exactly. none, none of that is of is of value to you because like yeah because i i'm 30 years old and mm. technically i should be like my dad my at my age was like married i'm not I yet think i was born no, i was not born i'm not sure but yeah they like, you know, can he definitely had a kid hmm. and like you know he was looking out for family whereas i i am like 30 and i'm like hmm. just like just kind of doing what i want doing what makes me happy being smart about my stuff i still do stupid things i still make mistakes but then it's more like you know i'm 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 not follow following that cycle of like oh, I have to do what my parents do I need to get mm. married and it's like it's not easy like I have fortunately understanding parents who are kind of like chill but then I still know somewhere inside they are thinking things 
and like especially it, my dad must be like he it, it does a take up uh, i think that's the basis of everyone's uh, decision uh, at least in this country yeah what yeah, what it, will it my parents say or it what say. will what will that auntie say <laughs> yeah <laughs> like parents relatives what will other people say i'm like you know you don't have to bother like you know if doing this thing making this facebook post putting up this selfie or putting out a song which you recorded like when you were sitting in the bathroom if it sounds mm-hmm. if you feel like this sounds kind of nice if you're happy with it put it out there someone doesn't like it and it's not like up. and it's not like you're you, you're you don't have to have that ego like n- there's nothing yeah. there's nothing wrong it's not like you have millions of followers so who who are you yeah. worried about <laughs> yeah exactly. who, who, about? who cares like you know and it's like yeah if you if it's something really that bad it's like you know maybe that's that's something which you understand like cool so this did not resonate with anyone yeah and maybe someone will give you like constructive criticism where mm. like hey this is not work because or you ask someone for like mm. constructive criticism where it's like mm. you know you you might learn something so it's like you have to keep an open mind i'm not saying that like you ignore all opinions it's mm. like listen and know how to figure out like this is actually a good point also and take like, your take your uh, own decisions uh, yeah. learn to take your own decisions and learn to uh, yeah. live with it like you you might make a, a wrong decision um yeah uh, live i mean you uh, at least you made the decision on your own so if you make a mistake exactly. also yeah and it's like you you have to make mistakes to like learn stuff like yeah. i've made mistakes in the past whether it's like professionally personally relationships and all the kinds of stuff make mistakes people are going to if it's if it's terrible they might laugh at you then next day they'll find something else to laugh at yeah. maybe you will kind of grow up enough to be like oh yeah that was stupid and yeah. laugh at that and like you know i still have that every single day and, where and I if you do if you are able to reach a stage where what i did is stupid that that's good yeah. for you good. because yeah, it's if, great yeah if you if you don't reach that stage and if you think that what the stupid thing you're yeah. doing is great then uh, <laughs> then yeah, the, it, then have a it's those fine lines yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you can you can't be completely ignorant and oblivious and yeah, yeah. like you know do stupid things you have to have like, some level like, of self awareness also yeah. exactly uh, yeah which yeah. i think like you know if if you are someone who listens to this and feels like yeah they have a point yeah i would be like yeah you you're not likely to be the kind to make mistakes like that but yeah it's like i look at my facebook status is from like 2009 oh, to 2010 and it's like so it's, it's always horrible and yeah. it's like sometimes i remember like i would have posted a cryptic message yeah and like you know for me i'm like i know exactly why i wrote that and i'm like yeah. oh man it's so cringe and then now i don't but the thing is like you know i i accept that like and i'm like that was a version of me in yeah. 2000 or yeah. 2010 like you know that's just me so i'm like you know and now i'm not that so yeah. good like you know you, you learn you learn you make mistakes and yeah. yes like i always say like you know just you just have to be happy with your choices take do what you want be smart and like you know as like a good thing to keep in mind is like try to provide value to like your followers to mm-hmm. your own to your own self and to just like people like you know always try to make the world a better place like i think that's something which i actively try like i don't do a whole lot of you know stuff which would make the world a better place but then it's more like i try in my daily personal life personal actions and stuff i try to do like little things like it could be like you know reducing plastic usage or yeah stuff like that it's like you Just, know and as long as you don't need to go out of your to help but don't as long as you're not hurting anyone or like yeah, exactly. doing something yeah, don't, don't negative Yeah. Yeah, it's like if if That's you enough. don't yeah, exactly. It's like you 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 need to debate and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But if you're just putting someone down for the sake of it, yeah. like you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all and people go like, "Oh, but what if you have what what if their opinion is wrong or stuff mm-hmm. like that?" I'm like, "Well, if a lot of people recognize it mm-hmm. and they kind of don't interact with that particular comment, mm-hmm. then the person's kind of forced to be like, "Oh, okay." it seems like no one's pressed the like button on this misogynistic statement that i say mm-hmm. well that's probably because that is a wrong thing for you to say like you, know, you can educate and you can get involved and have like you know discussions when you contribute to other people's success it will yeah. come back to you 
you know and ultimately it's, people it's like know. maintaining uh, that relationship and even uh, exactly, even yeah. connecting that to uh, like my world also uh, yeah. like people who just come straight to me and say uh, can you uh, once i tell them how much i charge they they'll be like uh, can you give me a discount i'm like why why should i <laughs> like give me a reason to give you a discount like exactly, if, yeah. if you're if you're someone who i worked with over the over a long period of time you have contributed to my um Yeah. my work getting better and uh, uh you know yeah. then yeah. i have and you have trusted me with your work continuously uh, yeah. over, over the past uh, you know over a span of time then it makes sense to give why should i give you a discount otherwise who are you like yeah who are you yes like how you aren't really contributing to anything it's like you know you're devaluing my work if anything yeah so it's like this point in doing yeah. all that yeah so so yeah. Uh, just to tie this uh, all up as a like a yeah, end, yeah. Uh, thing just i just up. so just for everyone to know at the end of the day what what can they uh, expect in terms of um, like we already uh, sp- spoke about uh, it's a long term uh, you know investment this whole marketing yeah. thing but what can they expect yeah. in terms of uh, returns and how can they see uh, there are different yeah so i think coming in. yeah one of the key things which i would say is like you have to like you know decide on your budget and once you have like the money side of it sorted out and now it comes to spending is that you need to track your stats so you need to see your followers on your facebook and instagram and your spotify your streaming numbers and then put the money in and take people to those kind of platforms where like you know if when you want people to listen to music so you track your views you track your streaming so it's like you don't exactly look in terms of the money you're making but you look in terms of like overall growth you mm-hmm. obviously you'll be making some money during this whole process mm-hmm. where you you reach your show i show your ad to a fan and your fan buys a t-shirt so you make some money back but then it's very long term it's like if you started with like 2000 followers on spotify you run like some big ad campaigns and you reach Two and a half thousand followers on Spotify. So you have grown five hundred followers. So mm. you can argue like you know, but then that followers don't give me any money. But mm. the next time you release a song, that's five hundred more people who will get your song because they're following you on Spotify. Mm. And to do that, you need to do a few other things, which is more marketing, like Spotify playlist pitching and all that kinds of stuff. But then you essentially increase your fan base by five hundred more people, and they listen to your song. You get paid money for streaming. Plus, and the potential you know, they know that you're there. Not, yeah and yeah exactly, uh, they might yeah. come for your show the the extra yeah, fine come for your show yeah. buy yeah. a ticket to like you know one of your uh, shows or they buy merch or they go to band camp and they buy your music so yeah that's something which i would tell like you know it's you you can't necessarily think in terms of money in money out it's more yeah. about money is not in see, yeah. yeah see what the money has done and then be like cool so this is where things are right right now and then for the next release maybe you have your grown your reach and then that will return some money for you and then you put your money back into the advertising or marketing or so and then i know i keep saying spend money but then there's definitely lots of ways in which you can do stuff without spending money it's like hmm. for instagram is like using hashtags and spam yeah. stories reels if you are in like in your there's not but then there's if tiktok is available where you live definitely try and dabble in it like there's nothing wrong in trying stuff out maybe yeah. you'll find something that works really well it's like mm. i i was not on instagram till like 2015 and the only reason why i got on instagram was because i started to do ads and i'm like cool i need a presence on instagram mm. so i can see how it works and now i am almost exclusively on instagram mm. like you know i check facebook when like my instagram feeds empty i go to facebook and that's how i use it so yeah i would say like in terms of returns definitely it's like do your research make smart decisions and look at like the big picture rather than just money in money out because like money out you will rarely see especially yeah. when you're like a young band when you're all the band yeah for sure it's like also planned out when we were doing oh sorry sorry uh, continue yeah so i was just saying like when for using plenty as an example it's mm-hmm. like we we had some goals in mind it's cool so we want to sell these many albums this many on vinyl this many pre-orders we we set target in a week mm-hmm. 
and it's like you know and then we could have stopped our advertising there because we were like oh we made what we want to do in a week but then pretty smart like he was yeah. just like nah keep spending money because yeah. like it's obviously resonated with people enough to, for us to reach our goals now let's just reach new fans like you know and he reached that goal about, uh, uh, this time because he had invested in it, uh, the previous yeah. and for like and the before years, and the one for before the, that yeah before yeah and there's like we run ads constantly for different kinds of stuff and it's like uh we'll have probably like spend 100 200 dollars a month on ads mm-hmm. and that's like when we are spending less to just like you know conservative budget and that time our, our intention is not necessarily to find new fans sell merch and stuff it's mostly like you know hey i am plenty yeah. you just to be relevant like dream theater yeah, yeah you know you like dream theater maybe you like my song maybe they won't click the ad they'll just be like annoying and just mm-hmm. kind of swipe past it but then mm-hmm. when they see like five different ads from plenty from like mm. different angles different images different videos and stuff they be like okay maybe i will check like you know check what the fuss is or maybe next year <clears throat> we'll announce a tour mm. and then because they have engaged with the ad in some form we'll show them the ad again and they will be like okay he's coming to play i will make my decision at the show if i like him or if he's yeah. full of shit like you know uh, so the way like, of looking at uh, this is i think uh, there's a like business term right top of mind so uh, yeah. you st- you're trying to stay top of mind so when the actual uh, time comes to click on something or buy something yeah. or go for a show for a uh, penny show yeah. or whoever show uh, when that time comes uh, yeah. you're right there on the top and yeah just right like people will have face. that instant recognition they yeah. they'll be like you know they'll know as soon as they they probably see it on a newspaper or a magazine that like you know this artist is playing a show and be like oh i actually know of that band because yeah. i've seen ads from it and so it's by like, ticket let's check them out exactly yeah. yeah and that that's the kind of uh, way you get returns and like i said it's you have to stop thinking as like you know i put 100 dollars to send people to band camp to buy a cd but only two people bought it but then i'm like you have to think about like of the like you know a thousand other people who saw the ad mm. did not do anything either because they weren't convinced of the one song they heard mm. but then at least now they know you exist mm. and you can kind of remarket so that's when the whole facebook advanced marketing kind of stuff comes into play mm. but you can definitely do it like you know it's it is worth the investment when you're starting small you can learn stuff yourself there's so much free shit on the internet like i learned from the internet and just like doing Fortunately the luck I had was I spent someone else's money not my own money mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I had that going on for me but then even now when I learn stuff it's like you know I just go test stuff out. you don't have to spend $100 you don't to have to yeah. you can you can spend $5 yeah. and be like cool so this this looks like it's not working like you know if, if I spend $5 and go two clicks it means something somewhere is wrong because like two and a half dollars a click is a lot of money Hmm. so it's like in this stuff like that and everything does not be need to be big money you can start small when you're doing it yourself for advertising yeah. start small see how they see how you feel like i was helping a guy in the us last couple of weeks ago where i told him spend 10 dollars a day for a week hmm. and i showed him how to set up the ad hmm. and then after a week he called me and then he showed me the results and then i said so what do you think he was like i don't know what to think of it but then now i know the next time i run ads i have this as a base mm. so it's like i spend 70 dollars for one week of ads and these are the results i got yeah. now next week i'll set up another ad for 70 dollars target something else mm. and then i can check the baseline like you know so if i got more clicks for the new campaign it means i've done something better so that's like the good move so i'm like that's exactly it and then you kind of learn to apply that on like a bigger scale Hmm. Obviously at some point it'll become too big for you to handle yourself that's okay. when you hire money yeah. and that's when you hire people and to do that you would also have the money because it's become too big for you so yeah it kind of when it reaches that stage out. just give it to someone who when it reaches a stage yeah. where you can't and just give it to someone because first thing you're saving time uh, so you're yeah. uh, you have more time for yourself so you're hiring some outsourcing that job to someone yeah. their job is to handle it and do that yeah. service for you so just that's one thing second thing uh you'll see the results more easily than you like kind of figuring it out and like uh, this this formula yeah. works, this formula like you don't that's yeah. not that's not something you're good at so just 
give it to someone who is good at that and uh, yeah. the, it might it might uh, it might work it might not work but if you are hiring a professional there is a uh, high chance work, of it working yeah. but work, uh, yeah. if it, if you hire someone uh, with a low credibility and if it doesn't work okay yeah. you made a mistake now next time you know not to make that mistake so mistake, so yeah. hey, like, you have to do research it's, it's all about being smart like that's what i would yeah. say it's it's not about how much money you have or how much money you're spending it's about what you're doing yeah. within your resources yeah. Yeah. and it's like and these times there's just no excuse just saying that i don't know it's like what's google there for like you know the other in thing which i always say is uh you need to know enough about a certain topic hmm. to know if a person you're hiring knows what they're doing so it's like yeah. if you if i just say oh yeah i can run your ads for you i've run some ads before and then i just do whatever i want without really thinking things through and i go like yep yeah, cool here's your results hmm. i spent a thousand rupees and i got you 500 clicks and you're like great thanks hmm. and then you go through reports and you see 500 clicks 400 came from indonesia 200 you know then you're like oh you wasted my money because no one in indonesia is really cares for this music yeah. first of yeah. all yeah. and like it, it could be all be bots, bots and not don't to say everyone in indonesia hmm. bots but then that's where click farms are in general in india also has a lot of it hmm. so like you know those are the kind of things so you need to know enough about the business and the activities before you hire people so yeah it's you need to have like a good understanding of shit when you sign a deal with the record label you also have to understand that like they basically own you for, yeah. like you yeah. know how much of money they give you they own you for that entire money and yeah. after they've made that money back they still continue to make money from you so like, and they still uh, and in some cases they sometimes still continue to own your tracks so yeah, exactly like, yeah um, cuz i i was masters. working with someone who released a really iconic album in the past hmm. and that person can't release yeah that album That's again right. because someone else owns the rights to it yeah. and then he's just like I really want to get that released but hmm. the contract I signed back then hmm. when didn't know anything about it still yeah. burdens me to this day yeah, yeah. and I'm like yeah, so don't get in a shit situation do a research be independent yeah. use google yeah. yeah. talk to the right people be nice yeah so it's a good uh, <laughs> conclusion Just I think the two plan. takeaways would be uh, budget well do your research and uh, think your it's still a business and it's Yeah still, yeah yeah you keep in mind it's a business yeah. and so, yeah cool right thank you thank you so, so much, much. <laughs> See yes see you bye, bye.